going on guys, Jack here and welcome to episode 61 here of the Road to Glory with FC United and Manchester. Hopefully you guys are good. Uh, today we've got a big game against QPR in the league uh, as we kind of come to the end of our first season in the Premier League. Uh, looking at the league table first and then we'll come on to fixtures. Uh, with 31 games played, uh, we currently have 37 points. Um, there's a few teams who we can catch today if we were to win or, and kind of catch up with. Uh, looking at the league table, one more, I think one more draw or one more win will probably see us safe with six games remaining of the season. So it'll be interesting to see how it goes. Looking at the top goal scorer in the league, Shane Barney is currently in the lead in terms of goals in the league. He's had another absolutely insane season. Stepped up to this level once again and it's absolutely fantastic to see. So anyway, let's get straight into today's stuff. Uh, first things first, fixtures. Since the last episode, what was the last episode? I believe it was the nil-nil draw against Liverpool. Uh, so since the last episode, I kind of set out an aim of winning three games in the like, next sequence of results. In the end, we managed two wins, one draw and four losses, which wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be simply because other teams in the league have really been struggling. Uh, looking at the Leicester game, we got a 1-1 draw against Leicester. A little bit disappointing in the end. Looking at the stats, not many chances for either side. 1-1, probably a fair reflection of the score. Uh, but when you go 1-0 up after one minute, you kind of expect your team to go out there and grab a few more. On the back of this, we had a game that was televised against Cardiff City. Um, tough game. Cardiff obviously came up with us last year. Really 50-50 in the end. Perhaps unfortunate to not grab a point, if not three. Uh, but, you know, that's the nature of the beast when you're playing football. You're not going to win every game that you necessarily deserve to win. But it was still a good performance and it was good to see us grab two goals. And good to see Christine Callender get on the score sheet as well, the um, Argentine centre mid. On the back of the Cardiff game, a good tune, one win away at uh, Fulham. Good little comeback. Um, we were 1 0 down after, well, three minutes into the second half, but the team responded amazingly. They went down to 10 men after it was 1 1, and we managed to see out the game and have a good kind of last 25 minutes, which is really what saw us win the game. That la late performance by us that saw us grab one of our goals, but also kind of apply pressure to them throughout the kind of closing stages of the game. We then had an incredibly bitterly disappointing result against Tottenham. Obviously, we'd given them a pretty good game earlier on in the season, so to lose to them 4-1 at home was a little bit hard to take. Um, they're just a better, see, uh, a better side. Uh, Calendra got sent off as well, which probably didn't help our case, but that's just one of those things. Uh, we then had another home game against another one of the big clubs in England, and that was Man City, a feisty derby to say the least. Show you the highlights of this game. There were all three goals coming in the space of six minutes, and there were two sendings off as well. The good feisty stuff. Uh, I believe Vidal got sent off in the t like the tie when it was at the uh, Etihad as well. So kind of odd to see um well a player getting sent off in the same derby match twice in one year. Uh, but nevertheless, we did actually take a lead uh, through Shane Barney. However, uh, Man City, they've got a better class than us, and it really showed uh, as the game went on. Muller grabbing a goal there, slightly scrappy goal, but I suppose they'll take it. And it was a little bit disappointing uh, defending of the set piece by us. And then immediately from kickoff, they went and they grabbed another, which was it kind of came from us attacking, which is a little bit unlucky, to be honest. But just one of those things, you know, they, they, they were the better team. Their class showed, and. Um, there, there was some really good clinical play by them when chances did come their way. Uh, looking at the stats, it was a little bit disappointing to see us not create anything more. Um, obviously, this counter-attacking kind of tactic that I've been going with with the five at the back. Um, there'll be games where you really break against oppositions, and then there's times where you just can't get the ball off them to create anything. And that this was kind of one of those games. But anyway, 2-1 uh, is how it finished. So that was that was pretty tough to take, but on the back of this we did go and get a 3-0 away win at West Brom, which is absolutely insane. Shane Barney grabbing a hat trick. Um I mean he, he was back to his best at this game. He was so clinical in front of goal. We created a lot of chances, all things considering, despite not having all the ball. And this was kind of one of the games that I was kind of saying that we didn't have against Man City where it just seemed like we could get the ball on the break and we were able to hit teams really hard on the counter. And, you know, just spring the offside trap um, and then use the pace of Barney really to break through. Uh, this was a good goal here. Vyman with some pace. Barney back post, tidy little volley finish. Uh, really good finish there. 
Uh, kind of odd to see all the goals in this game being so spaced out. Barney usually, he seems to either have a really bad first half and then an insane uh, second half for all at Hill. He'll have an amazing first half and then just run out of steam. But this game, a uh, good solid performance all the way through. Shane Barney there. I mean, look at him. The pace there to beat the keeper to the ball. giving up, not Never giving up on the balls. And talking about never giving up. Um, oh, God. I'm, it sounds like I'm quoting Rick Castley. But this goal, I mean, this shows his determination. He runs through three or four defenders on the way to getting that ball in on the rebound, having hit the crossbar. And that, it was insane stuff. I mean, it, you, you can see how his 13 determination helped him then. But anyway, uh, that's good stuff. Uh, Barney is actually improving statistically, which is good to see. Stuff like um, his acceleration has been improving of late. Um, I think his off the ball's gone up as well. It has. You know, he's still developing as a player, which is really good to see. But anyway, um, that's kind of what's what in terms of our league performance. Uh, just a quick look at kind of recent form of players. Uh, Shane Barney's averaged an 8.0 in his last few games. adani has been in insane form again this year. He's, I think he's top of the league for most man of the matches. He has 10 man of the matches in 31 league games, which must be some kind of record, uh, I'd imagine, for the Premier League. But he's been insane, obviously, since he came here when we were in League One on a free um, and he's really stepping up all the levels. A lot of players have really stepped up this year because I was concerned we were going to struggle, but a lot of players have improved a lot and in, kind of made that jump that they've needed to make in order to help support the team. Uh, players like Mohamed Abu obviously never got a chance in the uh, kind of the Premier League um, with Man City, who he was at. Now he's here. He is performing really well for us. Uh, in terms of kind of top players, Calendra, the Argentine lad, is playing very well for us. His rate, uh, well, his value is now 12 million, which is kind of good to see considering we bought him in for 10 million. Um, Mohamed Abu obviously rated highly, and so does Pal Tari. Looking at the transfer information of players, there's a few really odd ones here that I thought at least. So looking at the values, Shane Barney, for whatever reason, he's worth 8.5 million. Now, I know, I know he's really top goal scorer in the Premier League. But 8.5 million, looking at his stats, seems like an awful lot of money and I may have to cash in on him. I mean, I don't want to and in the ideal scenario, I'd really like to keep Shane Barney for the long run just because I feel as if he's got uh, enough quality to kind of have a career here at the club. Uh, be that kind of just as a backup forward or whatever. But as we kind of try and step up into Europe and stuff and we have to keep our squad depth, I think he'll be here for the long run. Um... Who else is there? Graziano's value's gone up, which is good. A lot of these players have come in on free, so to see their values go up is really promising. Um, in terms of our squad, a few players obviously have been out on loan. Alexis won the Championship Player of the Month whilst at Birmingham uh, a few months ago, which is insane. Uh, really good to see him performing well for them. And good to see him getting regular first-team football because it can only benefit him as he develops into a top-class player. Uh, Garfield Thompson as well. The Jamaican lad on loan at Bolton Wanderers. Uh, he's played eight games for them. He's getting a good little bit of a run out for them, which is good to see. And it gives him a, a good chance to develop in their first team. Uh, so that's that in terms of the kind of, I guess, what's what. Um, I really don't think there's a much point in me live coming much more of this season just because there's not a lot left to play for in terms of we should get mid-table now. So I think the last, the next episode will be just the last game of the season, which is Aston Villa away. Um, but we go into today's game against QPR knowing a win would put us in 10th if Norwich failed to win and it would put us just behind QPR on goal difference which would be good um, so I'm going to be playing with our strongest 11 pretty much here Marine, Perrine, Glenn Stewart, Adani, Musavi, Paltola, Abu, Calandra, Peltari, Barney and Vyman um, the only real weak link is the lack of Graziano but giving him a break give him a little bit of a rest uh, and Shane Barney actually is only four goals off becoming the FC United of Manchester all time league goal scorer which would be absolutely insane if he could achieve that um, but who knows maybe, maybe he can get it this season it would be interesting actually to see if he could do it four goals in I think the remaining seven games is it seven games I'm pretty sure it's seven games including this one that's pretty doable to be honest it would be really good to see him get that record because he's been so superb and he has been one of the kind of leading lights in this squad um, really guiding us he saved us from relegation in League One um, 
and since then he's performed absolutely insanely. And that, that was poor by Barney. You, you probably expect him to take that. So that's a little bit disappointing to see him squander that chance. Because we, we don't know how many chances we're going to get in a game like this. With our kind of style of play, we might only get one chance a game. But it's important that in this opportunity, Barney's through now. You'd expect him to bury it. And he's missed it again. That's two sitters he's missed already. I, I, I big up Barney and say how good he's been. And then he just misses constantly. Um, Callender is exhausted. Did I not pay attention to fitness levels? I always do that. Sometimes it's just an oversight, but Vyman's there. Fred through Barney. Callender with the long-range effort. That was a good save by the keeper, but good to see us getting some efforts away on goal, to be honest. Um, but we need to create and score a chance whilst we're in this kind of controlling, commanding position, which is the important stuff. So we need to get a chance here. Barney's there. Get the ball in the box. Marine... Marine, the left wing back, great goal for him. That's only his second goal for the club. He got his first ever goal for the club uh, earlier on this season. Obviously, he came here from Liverpool um, when we moved up into the Championship, and he's proven to be a really good signing for us. He's been a first team regular, the young Spaniard, and that's a great goal for him. So, at uh, half time, looking like we're going to go in 1 0 up, which is pretty good, all things considering. Uh, looking at possession, we don't have much possession, but we're creating far more chances, which is exactly what I want us to do. I'm just going to tell the guys I'm happy with their performance. Um, and we'll see how we get on here. You know, we've had a good little first half. At 60 minutes, I'm going to sub off Calendra because he looks exhausted and just, you know, switch it around, mix it up a little bit. Uh, and we'll, you know we'll take it from there. So we've got another chance here. I really want Barney to grab four goals this year. To be top league goal scorer after like three years would be insane. I think that his total goals would be something like 84, 84 goals in the league, which would be pretty insane uh, by anyone's standards. Don't quote me on that, by the way. I might be a few numbers off. I think it's 84, unless it's 64. But nevertheless, Paltari's through. He buries it. And that's 2-0. So now, now I feel comfortable just to take off Calendra and bring on Christopher Brown, the Trinidad and Tobago international player. Give him a little bit of a run out. Uh, see how he can get on. That's Peltari's first goal of the season, which is kind of surprising, all things considering, because, I don't know, he often grabs a few goals from midfield, but this year, with our kind of more direct play, he doesn't get a chance to catch up with play as much because he's one of the players that kind of sits behind and is key in the defending elements. And then when we pump it up to Vyman and Barney, because uh, of how direct we play, very often he's now in the box by the time the ball comes in, if that makes sense. It's hard for him to keep up with play. But 20 minutes left, uh, QPR with a chance here. Marine will collect it. And can we create something from the back with our direct play? Um, Vyman's through. Can he use his pace? He can. Can he meet the ball? He can. 3-0 against QPR. Absolutely superb stuff. Our clinical finishing and our ability to hit teams on the counter uh, is really showing. It, to be honest, that's been our main strength this year. You know, We have some two really good paces struck forwards in Vyman and Barney, we have an insane back four and a really good anchor man in Abu. Uh, well, no, back five, I suppose, and an insane kind of anchor man in Abu. It just makes sense to play to our strengths, and it's worked so well for us in games like this, like today. Um, next season, I would like to start playing slightly more positively. However, it's served us well this year. It's done the purpose, and I mean, a three 0 win against QPR is insane stuff. So passionate, uh, really good performance, really good result. Um, I'm content with that. Glenn Stewart getting man of the match as well, which is good to see. Um, so that result sees us move up into 10th from 40 points. So, guys, I think we are safe now, unless some very freak results happen in the last six. Uh, 40 points is what I set out to target at the start of the year. So to get that is a really good kind of landmark, I suppose. Uh, really proud of the lads for this season so far. Next episode will be the Aston Villa game, last game of the season. In that episode, I won't focus too much on the gameplay. It'll be more me talking about my plans for the kind of the future years here at the club because this has been a really good first season in the Premier League. It really has. We've played to our strengths tactically. Uh, our tactics have worked. You know, get men behind the ball, hit teams on the counter. It's effective, uh, but I do want to switch to a more positive tactic in the future. But anyway, uh, guys, I'm now rambling. As always, give the video a cheeky like. If you've got any comments regarding the video, leave them down below. And other than that, guys, I'll talk to you guys in a bit. I'm out.